I've just shot on the most expensive camera available to the masses. Of course, NASA's got some ridiculous stuff. But in terms of our realistic world, this is it. This is the stills camera to end all stills camera. And I'm aware that Face has brought out a new one yesterday, but it's not as good as this for what I do. I've been shooting on the Cambo for years with a 5DSR and a Mamiya lens. It's amazing. It's great. It is the best bang for buck studio camera. But that is all it is. It's the best bang for buck studio camera. It's not the best studio camera. This one, this one is the best. Not best bang for book, that's for sure. This is nearly $100,000 to get the whole setup and everything included with it. Well, let me tell you what we had. We had a couple of Schneider lenses. We had a 70 millimeter and we had 120 millimeter. They are amazing digital large format lenses. Extremely expensive. Digital large format lenses are about eight to 10,000 pounds. What's that? $15,000 each, something like that. My math is not great. The digital back itself is 150 megapixel. And here's the most important bit. 16-bit sensor, full frame, full digital medium format frame, not Fuji crop, not phase crop, not Hasselblad crop, full frame, six by four and a half centimeters. It's a big bit of sensor. The Cambo is it's the same as what I use, but better. As well as having the front tilt and shift and the rear rise and fall and swing, it's got it all over the place, everything. We can do all sorts of great perspective shifts. I won't go into them here because they're so niche, most of you won't want to know about how I can do weird stuff with it. But for me, it's very interesting. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is what the camera is, why it exists, who it's for, and at the end, I'm going to tell you how you can afford to use it. Now, this video is only made possible because of the lovely folks at Teamwork. And this is not a sponsored video. They've not paid me for this. But what they have done is facilitate me to use this camera because I couldn't find a hundred grand down the back of the sofa. So I didn't know how else to make it work. So I phoned them up and they're like, we'd love you to have a go with this camera. Uh, and of course, now I want to buy said camera. But they're like, we'd love you to use this. Uh, let, let us send it to you. Have a play. So we did. We had a big play. We had a big test shoot. We got this camera and we shot some still life drinks photography, which is when it's in its element. We use the movements. We use the high resolution. We use that great bit depth. We didn't have to do any HDR. didn't have to do any focus stacking. Everything was captured in camera, which is so delicious. But, but as well as everything being captured in camera, so was every microscopic speck of dust that you can't see with the naked eye. So slight drawback there, but I can live with that. Now, why this camera exists? You might be thinking, who's going to spend this much money on a camera like that? It is ludicrous. And it is ludicrous. You could buy a house for that much money in some areas, not many, and not very big one. But still, I could buy a house. And the reason it exists is because when a brand is paying for something to be shot for their worldwide campaign in perpetuity and they're spending over 150,000 they want the best they want the best pot they don't want any excuses where we've got some banding at the back of the red tomato because you know 14 bit depth they don't want that they don't want well we're gonna have to focus stack it and it's not quite work just here because we didn't have the technical movements on a proper camera they don't want that this is for when somebody goes, we want it to be absolutely perfect. And the other very common application for this is documentation. And I'm talking about for museums. They need to photograph something and have it 100% accurately documented. You can't do that with a Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji. The phase is the way to go for that. If you need to photograph something and it look exactly how it looks, this is the digital back for it. And if you need to get it perfectly sharp front to back, the camera, the Cambo bit, that is the perfect camera for it. So that is why it exists. And I know, very, very niche. But I guess what you really want to know is, how good are the photos? And let's take a deep dive into the computer and look at a recent shoot I did for some drinks work using this exact setup. 10,600 by 14,000 pixels. This isn't 100%. You can see we've slightly missed focus on the front here and it's just there. We'll notice this in 50 megapixels, but 150, it's an issue. And let me show you how big this photo is. We, we were just zoomed in here. Look at that. That's insane resolution. But, but is it any use? Now, let me tell you, because I can tell you what we wouldn't be able to have done with my other camera. See this beautiful gradation in the background? That would have had to have been added in post. We couldn't get that to work with a Canon camera. You need the sensor. You see that this is really sharp. I mean, obviously, we're way too close here, but let's go to a reasonable zoom. There we go. That's sharp. This is sharp, despite it being further in front. Look at the spritz and everything. 
and they're perfectly straight. I couldn't do that with my cambo. I, I could get one or the other. It's very difficult to do both because you don't have movements on both sides of the camera. So that's that's cool. That That is something which only could be done with this camera. Should it be done? I don't know. I like this image more now than when I first took it. This is not the final edit. This is like a halfway edit process. This is not the final one. The final ones are elsewhere still being played with, actually. This one here I really like. It's quite, it's quite a feminine photograph for me. It's not really the sort of thing I'd often be doing. Um, but again, great detail in the flowers. These are out of focus down here, but not miles out. We had so much movement in the lens, I couldn't get it all in in one shot. Sometimes it's not possible. Um, so obviously we needed these to be super sharp at the top. This is where the action is and the bubbles and the foam. But I still managed to get these here in at a weird angle. You know, that that's a decent depth of field. And again, very monochromatic, all the same colour. This colour channel is stacked. Um, so I think, you know, that that's useful in these instances, but how often do, I mean, I do it quite a lot, but how often do you do that? This one I wasn't such a fan of. Uh, lovely caustics though. Sharp glass, sharp, but I mean, that's really sharp, isn't it? Um, and even if we just go into 100%, even the background at 100% is pretty darn crispy, um, as is the glass. Let's just go through here. There's the core sticks from the glass. Do you think they're rather beautiful? But at this resolution, just looking at it, could you tell? Could you tell the difference? I don't know. And this is my favourite. This is my Wes Anderson sort of shot. Oh, computer wasn't loving that. See, nice and sharp here. This is pretty much a, well, it's not, it, it's, it's a straight on shot with the camera at 45 degrees. So, and this is, again, this is where the technicality of this camera comes in. We're looking at the glass straight on. This we're looking at straight on, but we can see in top of the glass. That's using rise and fall. Um, again, this is one of those cool things. If you took this with a normal Canon camera, you'd just see the front of the glass. If you had these perfectly straight, you can't have seeing in the top and straight lines with a Canon camera. It's one or the other. And, you know, this is one of those things where in technical photography, drinks photography, product photography, this this can be a useful player. This can be something which is quite good to be, you know, having in your arsenal. Now, my big learning here is a good camera does not make a good photograph. These are not my greatest photographs by any far stretch of the imagination. And if anything, I'm slightly disappointed in them because I had the expectation that throwing this much camera at it would make them better. It doesn't. What it does do is give me beautiful color rendition, perfect color rendition, immense options in post-production. But what it doesn't do is make my ideas any better. What it doesn't do is make my decisions any better. So, you know, there's a few things there. Now, of course, this is insanely expensive. And you're probably thinking, well, if you're using it on set, like how do you afford to buy a hundred thousand pound camera, dollar camera? And the answer is we don't, we rent them. We rent everything. This studio here, we don't really do, I mean, we're doing a shoot in here this week, but we don't do many shoots in here. This is basically an over-engineered man cave for me to do testing in. When it comes to a commercial job, there's a few studios in London that are used for them. We use those studios and we rent everything in from people like Teamworks because they have all the kit, they have all the know-how. You have a problem on set, you phone them up, they tell you how to fix it. Companies like this are what keep the photography industry afloat. What I want to know though, would you rent this camera for a big job? If someone had $150,000 for a shoot, would you be renting this camera to make sure you got it perfect? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.